You might have heard that omega-6 fatty acids tend to be inflammatory. In fact, many articles always warn about the overabundance of omega-6 fatty acids in comparison to omega-3. For those of you who don't know what this refers to, omega-6 fatty acids consist of uh, such fatty acids as linoleic acid uh, and linolenic acid, and uh, they are found in stuff like vegetable oils, but they're found ubiquitously. They're all over the food supply, whereas omega-3 fatty acids are much more scarce in the food supply. Omega-3 fatty acids, for example, are found mainly in fatty fish in the, in the form of EPA and DHA. But this video is not about omega-3 fatty acids. It's about a particular omega-6 fatty acid, and it kind of goes against the rule that omega-6 fatty acids are inflammatory because this particular omega-6 is extremely anti-inflammatory. And I will quickly add that the notion that all omega-6 fatty acids are inflammatory and cause inflammation, pain, uh, joint problems is a myth. And I'm going to be exposing that in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. There's a ton of research that nobody ever talks about which shows the true nature of omega-6 fatty acids. But the one thing you want to know right from the start is that there's only two types of essential fat. Essential meaning that it must be supplied in the diet. You know, that you can't be synthesized in the body. The two types of essential fat are omega-6 fatty acids, uh, as, uh, represented by linoleic acid, and the other one is omega-3 fatty acids, usually represented by alpha-linoleic acid, but alpha-linoleic alpha acid is actually just a precursor for the true omega-3 fatty acids, which is EPA and DHA. So let's talk about the omega-6 fatty acid that is not only infl inflammatory, but very anti-inflammatory. This particular stuff, now it's, it's called gamma-linoleic acid, GLA. Gamma-linoleic gamma acid enjoyed a surge of popularity in the 70s and 80s. There was a researcher named David Horobin from England who took a particular interest in this stuff, and, and uh, he published uh, a bunch of studies, and uh, he found it was basically a cure-all. Uh, the first actual medical use of gamma linoleic acid was to treat various skin conditions such as eczema and, and um, atopic dermatitis, which is an allergic reaction in the skin. Interestingly enough, this original use of gamma linoleic acid, let's call it GLA, it's a little bit easier to pronounce, this original use of GLA has actually largely been discounted. In other words, it's not as effective in treating skin diseases as originally believed. It might help, but it's just not quite the cure-all that it was originally touted as being. Now, what is gamma-linol GLA? What is GLA? It's an 18-carbon uh, length omega-6 fatty acid. It was first isolated from the evening of primrose plant, and the evening of primrose plant remains one of the mo main supplemental sources. In fact, this was the main supplemental source sold back in the 70s and 80s, evening of primrose oil capsules. The usual suggested dose was between 1 and 600 milligrams a day. Uh, it's um, Any type of a GLA supplement is safe up until you get to like 3 grams a day or 3,000 milligrams. And then you can get some pretty bad side effects. But uh, you don't have to be crazy to use that much. I don't think anybody ever uses that much. GLA is synthesized. Now, how is GLA produced in the body? As I said earlier, linoleic acid, that's the essential omega-6 fatty acid. Now, when, when you ingest linoleic acid, it's acted, it's acted upon by an enzyme called delta-6 desaturase. Now, I'm not trying to get technical, but it's important to understand this enzyme, delta-6 desaturase, because it, it can go in various directions. It can convert uh, linoleic acid into something called dihomolinoleic acid, which takes a very anti-inflammatory pathway. Uh, and, uh, uh, and when you ingest GLA, it favors the conversion uh, of... of uh, it, 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 it actually favors the conversion into uh, dihomolinoleic acid. And, and once you uh, have dihomolinoleic acid, it converts into a series of enzymatic steps into these anti-inflammatory... Uh, substances, particularly one called prostaglandin E1. Now, what's the significance here? It turns out that another omega-3 fatty acid is also produced from linoleic acid called arachidonic acid. 
You might have heard of this. It's also sold in supplemental form because uh, it produces a number of, of prostaglandin sub substances, which are fatty-like, almost like little localized hormone substances made from fat. Arachidonic acid produces uh, quite a few prostaglandins and leukotrienes. One of the prostaglandins, F2A, is involved in the uh, muscle hypertrophy process. And this is the reason why you see arachidonic acid supplements. However, arachidonic acid also produces a number of other substances which tend to be inflammatory. Now, when you take GA, uh, GLA, it competes with arachidonic acid for the uh, delta-6 desaturase enzyme. And if you take enough GLA, GLA dominates over arachidonic acid. So the, uh, the substances that are produced in the pathway tend to go, go towards the anti-inflammatory, pain-reducing pathway rather than the inflammatory pathway. This is the, the, that, in a nutshell, is basically the main advantage of GLA. Uh, so, you know, but, you know, like a rickadonic acid, you know, some people label it very bad because it tends to be inflammatory. But, again, it could be, it's, it, it, there's no absolutes in this stuff. You can't put an, make an absolute statement that arachidonic acid is always bad. Because like I say, one of them, one of the products of arachidonic acid, prostaglandin F2A, actually helps you build muscle. It's involved in the muscle building process. Uh, the, the primary supplemental forms of GLA, uh, which still exist today, are the main one, the one that contains the most. It's called borage oil. And this contains 18 to 26 percent GLA. Even your primrose oil contains seven, seven to ten percent GLA, and black currant oil, uh, which is a little bit rare compared to the others because it's more scarce, that contains fifteen to twenty percent GLA. Now there are factors known to impair the actions of the delta six desaturase enzyme in the body. Uh, uh, for example, diabetics for some reason have very low activity. Uh, of uh, delta-6 desaturase, so they don't produce much of the uh, anti-inflammatory factors. Uh, with the diabetics, uh, unfortunately, it tends to go more towards the arachidonic acid pathway. There's other factors that impair delta-6 desaturates, and these include aging. Uh, and when you get older, the enzyme becomes less active. Uh, stress, if you're under a lot of stress, it also inhibits the delta-6 desaturase enzyme. As I said, diabetes does, drinking too much alcohol does, smoking does, high cholesterol uh, levels do, tr consuming trans fats inhibits it, and, saturated fa and excess of saturated fatty acid consumption all inhibit this enzyme, delta-6 desaturase, which again uh, works with GLA to produce anti-inflammatory substances in the body. Uh, uh, if you have an omega-3 fatty acid deficiency, you also have less activity of delta-6 desaturase. And if you have a, a deficiency of certain vitamins such as B6 and a couple of others, you also have low activity of the uh, delta-6 desaturase. So, you know, it, when you look at it from this perspective, uh, it, it might be a good idea for a lot of people to consider using a GLA supp uh, supp supplement because their body is simply not going to make it. You know, I mean, if you if you fall into any of those categories, you're not going to be, be making sufficient GLA, and without that, you're going to uh, have a uh, lowered, uh, you're going to have a greater inflammatory effect in your body rather than anti-inflammatory effect. In 2010, uh, a, a team of uh, Thai, Taiwanese uh, researchers discovered that GLA regulates an, uh, the master inflammatory substance in the body. It's called nuclear factor kappa B. Uh, this actually turns on the entire cascade of inflammatory substances in the body, and GLA actually inhibits it. There's a number of other substances that, that nutritional substances that do also, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Uh, a separate mechanism by which GLA and other beneficial fatty acids reduce inflammation is by activating a, another system in the body called the, the peroxo, peroxum proliferator activator receptor system. And uh, some of these things uh, actually promote fat loss, some of them stimulate fat loss, and some, some of them stimulate uh, anti-inflammatory pathways. GLA tends to stimulate the anti-inflammatory pathway of the PPAR system. In both human and animal studies, GLA reduces the tendency of platelets to aggregate. Now, what are platelets? Platelets are these small, uh, I don't know, how to, what do I call it? They're little sub, they're substances that circulate 
kind of like cells, or not really cells, but they're they're sub they're uh, they're they're, they're uh, substances that circulate in the blood. They're involved in the blood clotting process. Unfortunately, sometimes they tend to aggregate uh, and kind of stick together. And when that happens, you get an internal clot formation. If this happens in a coronary artery that's already occluded by ethereal, ethereal sclerosis, it can initiate a heart attack. If it happens in the brain, it can initiate a stroke. And it turns out that GLA reduces the tendency of these platelets to aggregate uh, within small blood vessels. Uh, and, uh, how does it do it? And this is related because what it does is it cuts down the activity of a uh, prostaglandin called thromboxin A. Uh, thromboxin A stimulates blood clotting, while another uh, another prostaglandin called pros uh, called prostacyclin uh, inhibits blood cl clotting. When you take aspirin, it helps to prevent heart attacks because it reduces the production of thromboxin while favoring prostacyclin. When you use anabolic steroids in large amounts, you stimulate thromboxin and you inhibit prostaglandin. Uh, prostacyclin, which is one reason why anabolic steroids sometimes cause heart attacks or strokes, and, uh, especially in those who uh, use large doses. Uh, GLA can also lower low-density lipoprotein. This is the type of uh, uh, protein that carries cholesterol in the bloodstream. And when it gets oxidized, it's involved in the process of atherosclerosis. And it turns out that GLA lowers levels of LDL. And it also raises, at the same time, it raises levels of protective high-density lipoprotein, which, is, uh, which actually removes cholesterol from the blood, sends it, sends it to the liver where it's degraded into bile, and then excreted. GLA may prevent a, uh, a problem in diabetics called neuropathy, where the uh, nerves start to break down, usually happens in the legs uh, and, and, and the peripheral parts of the body. If it gets severe enough, uh, you actually have to have amputation of the uh, limb where the neuropathy is uh, occurring. And GLA has been shown to help prevent that in diabetics. Uh, GLA supplements uh, taken uh, in a dose of 360 milligrams a day for six months significantly improved symptoms of diabetic neuropathy. The nerve conduction velocity was also dramatically increased. Uh, now, another interesting thing uh, about that they discovered uh, in uh, one study a couple of years ago, uh, you know that a lot of people that go on a diet, they tend to, uh, in fact, not not a lot, 97% of people that lose fat on the diet tend to regain it within five years. It's called recidivism. Well, they did some interesting study a couple of years ago. They had 50 formerly obese individuals were randomized in a double-blind fashion to receive either 890 milligrams a day of GLA which was derived from five grams a day of borage oil or five grams a day of olive oil, which was uh, the placebo, for one year. Body weight and composition were, were, were assessed at the beginning of the study, at the three-month mark, and after 12 months. After one year of supplementation, the subjects receiving GLA had regained an average of, of just under five pounds, whereas those who used the olive oil gained 19 pounds. The study suggests a role for GLA in reducing weight regain following major weight loss in adults prone to obesity. However, I would add, don't think that just taking GLA is going to allow you to, you know, uh, after you've lost body fat, to go back to eating garbage and not exercising because GLA will not prevent fat weight uh, gain under those circumstances. I would look at it as a minor adjunctive aid to helping maintain weight loss after a diet. No more than that. You still have to watch calories. You still have to exercise. Other uses of GLA, it may play a role in helping to prevent various types of cancer, including prostate cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, and the most deadly cancer of all, pancreatic cancer. Again, this, this relates, all of this relates to the, the potent anti-inflammatory effects. If you, can, if you can keep systemic inflammation down the body, you prevent a lot of degenerative disease, including cardiovascular disease and cancer, the two leading killers. Unfortunately, systemic inflammation tends to increase with age. It's a term, they call it inflammaging. I'm going to have a huge article on inflammation in my Applied Metabolics newsletter, including ways to completely prevent it, so you don't have to be uh, you don't have to be a victim 
of these horrible diseases as you age past 40. I'm going to give you the whole details in simple English. Early studies, show, like I said, early studies showed that uh, the original study showed that GLA helped to treat various skin conditions, uh, most of them related to inflammation, such as eczema and a atopic dermatitis. Uh, but again, in more recent studies that looked at this found it's questionable. Uh, you know, it, it might help in certain cases, but it doesn't work quite as well as originally believed. Uh, because of its anti-inflammatory effects, GLA is also useful in treating asthma. Asthma is a uh, used to be thought of as a disease involving an irritation of the bronchial tubes, but over the years they, they began to realize that asthma is actually an inflammation. It's an inflammatory disease, uh, and uh, this is why the the uh, the shift of drug use for the treating asthma has gone from bronchodilators. Uh, that dilate the lungs to actually cortisol-based drugs because if you ke again if you keep the inflammation down in asthma you prevent asthma attacks and you control the disease GLA helps because again it produces those anti-inflammatory prostaglandins which block the inflammatory prostaglandins and leukotrienes that are involved in uh, in asthma now leukotrienes I should I should tell you in case you don't know what leukotrienes are they're another class of uh, of fat-like chemicals that are produced from arachidonic acid, and most of them have uh, inflammatory uh, effects. Uh, one very recent study uh, showed, it was a rat study, it showed that if you give uh, uh, GLA to the rats, it prevents a process in the brain called, uh, called uh, the production of advanced glycation end products. This, these, uh, they're called ages. These ages are produced when protein gets incorporated into uh, I'm sorry, when sugar, like glucose, gets in, incorporated into protein structures and weakens them and sometimes prevents them from working. It's, it's one of the hallmarks of aging. Uh, and in the brain, uh, this, the buildup of ages can cause memory defects. And also, it's related to the onset of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. So this initial uh, animal study, this rat study, showed that providing the rats with GLA inhibited the formation of advanced glycation end products in the brain. Can, it, can GLA help with stuff like tendon, uh, you know, tendonitis or inflamed joints? I haven't seen a lot of studies on that, but I have a feeling that if you use it along with omega-3 fatty acids, by the way, GLA and omega-3 fatty acids are an excellent combination because they, they affect different kinds of anti-inflammatory prostaglandins. So when you take them together, you have a synergistic effect. My feeling is that if you take GLA, and again, the, the dose range, a good dose for GLA would be maybe 300 to 400 milligrams a day. Uh, you know, you can take it from borage oil, primrose oil. Uh, the, the borage oil, you have to take less capsules. The primrose oil would require more capsules because it has less actual GLA. But I think if you took GLA with uh, omega-3 fatty acids, I think it would definitely help joint pain and, and tendon pain. Uh, the, I, I, I'm not sure if this has been tested yet, but if you look at the mechanisms involved, I can't see why it wouldn't help. So that's about it for uh, GLA or gamma linoleic acid. It could be a useful substance for a lot of people. You might check it out if you uh, have, feel that you have a lot of inflammation in your body or you have some inflammatory diseases such as asthma. It might be useful to you. Um, if you want more information, the, the most in-depth information you'll ever find on nutrition, food supplements, exercise science, hormonal therapy, ergogenic aids, uh, women's health, fat loss techniques at work. Subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. No better information anywhere, 40 to 50 pages every month. No advertisements. I'm not trying to sell you anything but truth, evidence-based data that also includes my 57 years of constant study and empirical knowledge uh, or experience gained from being in the trenches and gyms all over the world. I know what works and, I, and what doesn't work, and I'll tell you what I've learned in my newsletter and only in my newsletter. So, uh, and those who do, do, who do subscribe to my newsletter, uh, you will, uh, you, you're welcome to ask me short questions at the email portal on the Applied Metabolic site. This is only open to subscribers, however. I don't answer unsolicited questions. Subscribers also are invited to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where every day I post new information on nutrition, exercise, health, and disease prevention. 
every day. And I also have discussions about some of the topics that I wrote about in Applied Metabolics. And it's also a, um, a source where I can also be asked questions about anything related to these topics. Uh, so again, this uh, this uh, Facebook page is private. It's only open to subscribers of Applied Metabolics. So subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. I absolutely promise you, you will learn something in every issue. I don't care what your level of knowledge or what your educational level that you attained is. You will learn something in every issue. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, I know, I know, you. everyone who watches these videos, you've heard me say this ad nauseum, I admit it, but I really think that if people, I mean, having a dog is such a great addition to anybody's life, they're the greatest, I mean, these dogs, it's like they're genetically bred to love humans, they live for humans, I've never seen anything like it, I've never experienced anything like it, go to a local shelter, these dogs are just waiting for you, I mean, you know, they're they, the most loving creatures, I'm telling you, all of them from chihuahuas to pit bulls, I love them all. Go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. You won't regret it. Take care. Thanks for listening.